Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Michael and I are joined today on Skype, and Michael has a new topic for us. And uh, yeah, we have a Chinese flag on the screen. Michael, welcome. Yeah, welcome, Brett. Hello, dear listeners. Well, I do not know how to start a bit. We have been uh, stopped doing recordings uh, for several private reasons for the several weeks. And uh, I had uh, prepared some scripts who are dealing uh, with both the satanic media agenda, uh, which we have uh, done for several years ago for Christopher Lee and for James Dean, if I remember correctly. And it has something to do with science is the new religion. It has much to do with uh, conspiracies. So I'm just about to think <laughs> how we could name that session here, but maybe it's just a trial session or a trailer or so that you have a clue about what's going on in uh, this script here because this script is just the beginning of a bigger mess as usual and I try to incorporate uh, something and uh, some things and much out of the Bible for something that I think that nobody has uh, gotten into uh, this so far because otherwise it would not make any sense to do any kind of repetition so Brad uh, there we are here and uh, yeah, this is the Chinese flag. Yeah, that's interesting, Michael, just staring at this flag for a while. <laughs> it's uh, five pentagrams that are, uh, well, four of them pointing to one big one. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very uh, Jesuitical, isn't it? Yeah, and what kind I mean, of that? It, isn't it the, uh, the, the Roman Catholic Church that's come up with all the flags anyway, the bishops and all that? Yeah, first, I don't know. First of all, pentagrams is correct because it is just penta means five, so it means a five pointed star. And then uh, you have to use a very extreme, silly, simple symbolism. What kind of a direction are these stars facing? Well, it looks like they're all pointing to the big star. Mm -hmm. You know, they kind of rotate, you know, like. You know, if you take just the uh, the chevron, you know what a chevron is, right? It's like a triangle, but mm -hmm. with another little triangle mm -hmm. underneath it. And you take four of those, then you have the uh, the Maltese cross, don't you? Yeah, but uh, I want to have it simple, extremely simple. You see that the majority of stars are where? In the north, in the west, in the east, or in the south? I don't know. You tell me, Michael. Oh, if I look upon this flag, it's, it's quite obviously that at least four of these five stars are facing the east. Mm -hmm. and right. The, the, right. The east is there where the sun goes up. Right. Yeah. So very simple symbolism that it has something to do with the east. Didn't we uh, learn that um, Cain was going east of Eden? I can remember it's slightly bred in the Genesis it was. Yeah. And you gotta to, hold on a second, my cat is bugging me. I gotta oh, feed her. I'll be right back. Yes. Keep going though, I'll be right back. So that means that uh, this land is uh, if you look upon uh, any kind of a, a map in the world, is east, eastern. Yeah, so like uh, Japan. Japan is also, if you look on the world's map, in the east. And usually upon the time zones, it's uh, one of the countries where the sun is uh, going up quite, quite early. Yeah, so Japan would be a much more um, better example. All right, Michael, sorry. You there? You're welcome, yes. This is the flag of Japan. So it is just the sun. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And so China, if you look upon the world map, yeah, just uh, look upon the world map. Yeah, then China is clearly in the east. I do not know if I got a decent picture here. Yeah. 
Aber that, that, that's fair enough. Yeah, it's, it's clearly in the East. And we think about that uh, we are in the West. Yeah? Western values. And uh, it's the world wide West in the United States. Yeah, so this is West here. Yeah, until yeah, somewhere here. This is uh, yeah, Middle Eastern Asia, Minor Asia and all the stuff. This is Africa. Yeah, and this is China. China clearly is in the East like uh, Japan is in the east. So if you had uh, different time zones, then the sun is going up in the east. So the sun approaches every day quite more early in uh, Japan, in uh, Vietnam, in Korea and all the stuff than it is in Europe or in the United States. So we are talking about eastern countries. Yeah? So these stars are facing towards east. And uh, the flag of Japan also is the sun. What did we learn? That the women were weeping for Tammuz, King James Bible. Women were weeping for Tammuz. And Ezekiel 8 uh, tells about some abomination. Yeah, there it is. Would you care to read that, Brad? That's uh, Ezekiel 8. Sure. Verse 14. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. Then he said unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abomination than these. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house. And behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men, and their backs toward the temple of the Lord, with their faces towards the east. And mm -hmm. they worshipped the sun toward the east. Yes, they worshipped the sun. So they worshipped the creation instead of the creator. Where do we find this? I think it was in Romans chapter 1, Brett. Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 1. Somewhere in the 20s must it be. Yeah, there it is. Romans 1, 25. Which reads, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Yeah, which is the prime example, in my humble opinion, Brett, for creation versus evolution. Ah, but don't forget verse 24. Wherefore also gave themselves up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Yeah, it's a very, very profound chapter, chapter one of Romans, isn't it? Yeah, it is also not restricted to any sun worship or any creature worship. It's just about that uh, the uh, these people in Rome, especially because it's Romans chapter one, of course, yeah, they are absolutely against God. Yeah, so there are many, many, many Romans are in the Antichrist spirit. So that is my humble opinion that I could not come across the fact that people really think that Rome is the city where the um, where something good is is, is uh, originated. Yeah, I can't, can't ask Martin Luther. Yeah, <laughs> ask mm -hmm. Martin Luther's opinion about Rome. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that was uh, fifteen hundred years later. It never changed. It's the eternal city, but it's the eternal blasphemy. It's Rome. But back to my uh, thinking of that uh, flag from China, because usually people are very scared and concerned about uh, the importance and the role of China in the uh, next decade or so that China takes over from the United States, uh, has already become a world power, has uh, allegedly uh, rockets uh, and and uh, all the industry and all that stuff. And, uh, you know, what originated out of China? Uh, mm, so three and a half years ago in Wuhan, Brett. Oh, yeah, it right. originated from China. The old crown V. 
Yes, it originated out of China. Uh -huh. So can we assume that China plays a big important role and uh, why is it? And is it really a People's Republic of China? What's all about it? You see that I, we will mix in so many things and we will mix in also facts from the Bible in it. And so that every time I look at that China's uh, flag, it makes me smile, Brad. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it makes me really smile. You see here two actors. Yeah, don't for one bit think that these people have some power on their own. The illusion is that these people, they are just sovereign and these people, they are ruling over a country and its population. And uh, the reality actually is that it's just a big uh, theatrical play. What uh, did uh, Shakespeare, if he had ever existed, would say is all the world's a stage. And don't forget that it was the Catholic Church who invented the television. What does the People's Republic of China have in common with the United States of America? Well, if you look upon their flag symbol, you see on both sides of the ocean, in the west, left, and the east, right, you see a five-pointed star, a pentagram. How convenient. There must be no other symbolism left. Both countries are extremely large, almost identical large. China is a little bit uh, bigger and also got a much more population. But that's it. Yeah, You've got a five-pointed star. And so that's no secret what a five-pointed star is. You see that we are a biblical program here. We are not talking about uh, astronomy so far or what else? Politics. Yeah, We are just uh, have the Bible as our measurement. And the five-pointed star is just a common thing happening, being present in both flags. So, it's not only limited to China and the United States. It's also the symbol of the so-called European Union. So, you got another five-pointed star flag of the European Union. Usually, it's just a blue flag with the... Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Oh, 12. 12 stars. The original countries. And here you see all the countries and they were getting larger and larger, the European Union. Yeah. There are more than 30 countries now involved in the so-called European Union. Except that uh, <clears throat> this country here stepped out that's great britain that's in my humble opinion one of the few countries in the world which are claiming themselves uh, to be better than others because it is great britain it is not only britain a part of a so a county in the great britain uh, but it's just uh, consists of several like counties in uh, america it is just consisting of uh, Scotland and Wales and England and Northern Ireland and all the alike. So they have stepped out the European Union, which was called the Brexit, the British exit, the Brexit, for several reasons. Some of the reasons may be that in Britain, it is the capital head city of the entire world with the city of London Corporation. Oh, I don't want to get too much political here, but it's really important because uh, today, on this day, when we do uh, this uh, session here, this trailer here, it is uh, the coronation of uh, Prince Charles becoming King Charles. It's today, on the 6th of May. And Britain rules not only over Great Britain, but also over the Commonwealth of Nations. Ah, it's getting much more complicated, but okay, maybe we get, we'll get in detail uh, quite uh, later, but let's just focus on that uh, pentagrams here. You, you see that that's, uh, that's a common theme in the flag of the People's Republic of China, as well as the United States, as well as in the European Union. Why is it? Yeah, because the five-pointed star, I will just uh, make it a little bit more convenient to look at. Yeah. Yeah, you see the five-pointed star is a synonym for Satan. 
Hmm? It's a five-pointed star. It has uh, several meanings. Um, it is the transit of the planet Venus as the morning star, which happens to be five uh, to have five stationary points, which th then creates this kind of a pentagram. Yeah, you see it here. These are the five stationary uh, places of the uh, transit of the Venus. So it is the Venus pentagram. That's the first hint. Where well, this these are the the wishes of. Uh, Lucifer, the old name of Satan. And you here have five times I will. Yeah. I will ascend, I will exalt, I will ascend, I will be like. Um, no, I have to concentrate myself. I will ascend, I will exalt, I will sit upon. Maybe you should read it, sorry. Oh, sure. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into the heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Yeah, and now you see you got five times I will. Yeah, and so this is a symbol absolutely known for Satanism. It's the five point of star, the pentagram. Everybody knows that. That means Church of Satan, this is a distraction organization. Don't uh, think of them that they are serious. They are trying to get the attention away from the real Church of Satan. Yes, but that is the pentagram here, so that means the sigil of Baphomet or Satan, devil, what else you would like to call it. Yeah, this is the symbol of Satan. And now you got the symbol of Satan in all three countries. China, United States and the European Union. Great, huh? How great. So that means that Satan rules. But we, we, we do know that uh, when we are thinking about uh, Luke 4.4 4 and Matthew chapter 4, we know that uh, Satan has been uh, given all the worldly gifts in this earth just to try out to deceive people who are just uh, serving mammon instead of God. Yeah. You see that is the that is the that is the worth worth worse here, um, Luke. Chapter four verses five to seven, Brett. And the devil taking him to an high mountain showed him all the kingdoms of the world. Excuse me. In the moment of time, and the devil said unto him, All this power I will give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me. Yes, to Satan. And to him, whomever, whomsoever, I will give it. If therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's it in a nutshell. So you see that they have all the common sim symbolism here. So there's nothing good to be expected out of China because they have the same symbolism as uh, the older so-called world power, the United States or the European Union. They are all using the five-pointed stars. So they are all in this game. And you know, I don't want to show it, or maybe I have to show it, uh, you know that there is just one country in this world who says that the spiritual power is on top of the worldly power and that of course is the Vatican yeah where the golden key is on top of the silver key silver is depicted usually as a symbol for worldly things material things you see the 30 coins of silver what Judas Iscariot has been uh, promised if he would betray Jesus Christ and the golden key is on top of that yeah, and they are bound together. So the Vatican says, oh, I am superior to everybody who is just only into the material things or is just uh, superior to any material worldly kingdom. Yeah? So the Vatican rules over every other state, organization, 
and rules over all materialism in the world, means all the money and values in the world. And we know that from uh, some old um, canonic laws and uh, some papal bulls, Unam Sanctam, it is just a Roman Catholic uh, church who is uh, yeah, being granted to have a real possession. And every other thing is just uh, granted, but can be uh, withdrawn. So that uh, can be, yeah, you don't have any uh, right to, yeah, to own something actually. Yeah, that's that's also the reason, my humble opinion, why you are tax slaves. Yeah, why do you can you purchase a house and afterwards you have to pay taxes for that? At least in Germany, it is. Yeah, if it is your own ground, if it is your own house, why do you have pay taxes for that? Yeah, so you are never the sovereign owner of something so that is the big mess so that means that uh, there is some changes uh, coming out of china but uh, the agenda behind it is uh, quite the same uh, symbology satanic uh, symbolism uh, when they were just uh, raising up the united states of america which had been meant to be or to da be done by freemasons also as a distraction to get away from the roman catholic church because many 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 uh, exile peoples many many immigrants in the united states they were just fleeing from the papal concordats uh, and uh, from the papal bulls in europe and uh, there, there was the bartholomeum night where the river seine in paris in france was uh, uh, filled with blood of the protestants and all that stuff and so the french people were fleeing to the new continent to the new world also of course to canada where you have a county uh, where uh, quebec uh, quebec i think it's the capital city there uh, montreal and and all the stuff this is all just the coming of course uh, because of uh, french immigrants fleeing from uh, the catholic suppression in their home countries uh, out of europe so, to make matters worse, the flag of China is red bread. The national flag of the People's Republic of China, also known as the Five Star Red Flag, is a Chinese red field with five golden stars charged at the canton. And I thought that's very interesting because if I look it up in Oxford languages, they say that a red flag as a noun means used as a warning of danger. It's a red flag. There's no other way to see it, Brad. It's the red flag. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we know where red usually stands for. Yes, blood, right? Yeah, blood. Blood and sin. If you remember about the Chinese history, there was much blood shed. Uh, not also, also in, uh, or only in ancient times, but in recent, the 20th century. Yeah, when their uh, communist leader Mao Zedong was sharing blood in this uh, revolution on the... Oh, what was it? Ah, we will come to this later. Yeah, it was shedding blood. So th this by no means is a positive content. You got five five-pointed stars. They are facing east. It's an eastern country and uh, it is, has a red flag. Yeah, so that is just the beginning um, of my thoughts about uh, China. And this is my red flag then, a red flag also used as a symbol of socialist revolution, which does not mean anything else, but socialism means uh, it's communism in disguise. If you look at socialism, it means that everybody is equal. And so that means that this, uh, there is nobody who has an inherent right to own any possession. So that is just a scapegoat for, for just to introduce communism. Every socialism sooner or later will get into communism because there is only a small party of people in on the top hierarchy who are then just determine what to do, what to eat, what to spend your money on, etc. Socialism is not a thing which is in, in, uh, in, incorporated in the Bible, in, in, as far as I'm concerned. In the Bible, you have the Ten Commandments and it is clearly shown and it's clearly okay for the Lord if you have possession. So, this communist country 
<laughs> China, I think, serves a certain purpose because we have not had so much contact in the Western world with the Eastern world, especially China, in the 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th century. It just happened, in my humble opinion, only after the Second World War, when uh, the People's Republic of China had been founded in 1949, by the way, where they have been a little bit more open to the West. And it had been close to the West, uh, unless uh, Mao uh, or during the regime of Mao Zedong, which happened to be until the 1970s. And then China slowly evolved into an industrial nation. In my humble opinion, I assume that there is absolutely no In my humble opinion, there is absolutely uh, no doubt that China has been founded um, to, to play a big role in the future because they could have a, a huge amount of people in a huge land there with huge capabilities to test out, to try out some things. And not for the good of uh, mankind, I can tell you. When we think about communism, can you think of a country, Brad, where communism first was uh, been uh, playing a part or have been tried out by someone very special? Mm, yes, Paraguay. Paraguay, yeah, by so-called Jesuits. Jesuits being the army of the Roman Catholic Church. So we, we take a look to a communist country called Paraguay, which happens to be in South uh, America. Oh, now I have to switch to, to English, of course, sorry. Yeah, Spanish conquistadors, we know that the Spanish crown was, uh, <clears throat> yeah, what to say, was then the world power under the yoke of Rome in 1524 so in the 16th century and in 1537 established the city of Asconcion the first capital of the governorate of the Rio de la Plata during the 17th century Paraguay was the center of Jesuit missions where the native Guarani people were converted to Christianity this is a blatant lie converted to Catholicism and introduced to European culture you see, it all happened during the time where the Jesuits were founded in 1534 or been then been officially been uh, established by the papal Regimini Militantis Ecclesia in 1540. And that's uh, what gets me into thinking because uh, I think that uh, Paraguay is also some uh, satellite state in, uh, <clears throat> in South America where they tried out some things which is uh, far away from the United States, Brett, and which is far away from Europe. Mm -hmm. So we did not know much what was going on in Paraguay as much as we did not know what is going on after the, mm, it was in Russia also communism after the Second World War. And we talked about that in Russia, um, at least here in Germany. I do not know how, if it has also been called the United States, Brett, you have to help me out on that. It was called the Iron Curtain. Yeah, right. Correct. Yeah, so we did not know what was going on because everything was censored. And so, oh, and by the way, just to remind everyone, I'm sure Michael probably already knows this fact, but the Iron Curtain, that name came about in the theater when you used an iron curtain so you could have flames or fire on stage and the, the curtain not get burned. Mm-hmm. That's where the term comes from, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my interest is really, is could it be that the Paraguay serves also a, 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 as, a, as a tryout, uh, how people will behave, how everything can be uh, controlled, how things could be censored in Paraguay with the Jesuitical uh, missions, so to speak, on the native people then in Paraguay. Um, as well as then in, in China, because China or Russia also was uh, behind the so-called Iron Curtain. Let's look it up in the etymology. Etu, etu, etymology. There you go. That should work. Okay.
Yeah. <laughs> my smart brother, Brett. Or my clever brother, I already Brett. looked it up, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so you see, that is the Iron Curtain device to use in theaters. Or in Impenet... Impenetrable. 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 Thank you. In reference to the Soviet occupation of Eastern Europe. So once again, Eastern Europe, famously coined by Winston Churchill in 1946, but has been used earlier by, oh my, oh my, oh my, Alan Dulles. <laughs> Knights of Malta, Brad. Mm -hmm. As a meeting of the Council on Foreign Relations, another alarm bell. Mm -hmm. Goebbels, oh, the German Reich propaganda minister used it in the Second World War in the same sense. Uh -huh. Ah, so it was in Germany as well. It was a little bit uh, before that. Interesting, huh? Okay, so back to the topic. Another thing which hits me in, in, um, in China is <laughs> that uh, China is very, very old uh, dynasty, or it's a very old uh, country. And that's their favorite animal bread. Mm. It's a dragon. A dragon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, no, uh, it's a traditional animal. I wouldn't know if it's their favorite or not, because I don't know any Chinese people. Oh, I but can tell yeah, you. they use it all the time. Yeah. They use it all the time. Yeah, that's a, almost a sacred animal, so to speak, there, I think. Yeah, so they held it in high esteem. Yeah, so that is the yellow dragon flag. And everybody knows that there are dragon boats and, and, and all that's alike, all that is alike there. This, uh, this dragon is uh, everywhere, actually, everywhere in, uh, in China. Everywhere, just uh, and then we know absolutely that uh, if we look it up, uh, the dragon is a synonym of Satan, and that of course uh, would uh, go with the flow with our current reading here about the five pointed stars, the pentagram, in the flag of the um, yeah of the People's Republic of China, and there you go in Revelation chapter twelve, verse nine. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Yeah, so dragon means serpent, or called the devil and Satan, so that is a synonym for his spiritual power is the dragon. And so this is the uh, animal depicted for the People's Republic of China. Okay, you can argue now that's not that's incorrect, because it was only for... Uh, the dynasty, but uh, you see that the previous flag was the yellow dragon flag. Yeah, from 1865, uh, then 1889, etc., etc., etc. So you you come across the fact that this uh, society worships the dragon. It's not only worshiping the dragon in their flag; they are using, let me tell you this, uh, Chinese astrology that you really see, I'm not making anything up. Yeah, and there are 12 animal signs and guess what? <laughs> Red, ox, tiger, rabbit, dragon, snake, horse, sheep, monkey, rooster, dog and pig. Yeah, so the dragon and the snake also been prominently upon them. And the dragon's been seen as, oh my, oh my, oh my, uh, as the uh, as a mighty animal, as a mighty animal, yeah. But that's uh, that's so in your face. I think when you really, um, when you really look it up, uh, what's up with this uh, Chinese dragon is de facto an imaginary animal, also the only fictitious creature in the twelve zodiac animals. Oh, listen, listen to this. It's the only fictitious creature in the twelve zodiac animals, which is composed of nine <laughs> animals. <laughs> Including the body of a snake, etc. Fictitious. 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 Huh? Yeah, but you now you see this is a spiritual creature. Yes. Come on. It's been worshipped, although it's not existent in your in front of your eyes. Uh-huh. Okay. 
you can draw your own conclusions. It is just the beginning of the thing. You, you, you could do thousand sessions of China alone. But what I want to express yourself, myself is that you can really see what's going on there, that uh, when China is getting more and more important, of course, more Satanism is coming from the East. Because in China, people are suppressed, actually. Everybody knows there is censorship. Everybody knows there's communism. Everybody knows that. Everybody says, oh, no, we do not want to, uh, to have something this. Yeah, but, but censorship is everywhere. Yeah, think about the events which happened uh, in 2001. And don't tell me that there is one government in the, United, in the entire world who says, oh, 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 we got another opinion about it. What did your former president say? Either you're with us or you're with the terrorists, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, how pathetic. Yeah. And so you see that uh, if, if I go further along in, in my train of thought here, you got the uh, Japanese wars and all the stuff. There were so much things happening there. But uh, I'm not going into this. Uh, in 1949, the Republic of China government, led by Chiang Kai-shek, relocated its government and its institutions to the island of Taiwan. You know, it's quite recent that they say that, oh, maybe the China will invade Taiwan or Taiwan. I do not know how to pronounce it correctly. I love everybody. I love Chinese people, Taiwanese people, Vietnamese people, uh, black people, white people. I do not care, but I can't pronounce it correctly. I do not know. I'm sorry. Really sorry. Please don't think that I'm making anything up. I do not know if it's, it's Taiwan or Taiwan. I can't tell. On the mainland, CCP forces of uh, <laughs> Mao Zedong established the People's Republic of China and adopted their own national flag. Mm -hmm. Yeah, insert Mao here. Mm -hmm. Mao Zedong was trained by the Jesuits at Yale, China. A painting of Mao dressed as a priest once hung in the Vatican. Article below is about Mao and Yale, China. What was Yale doing in China? Yale being an elite university. Mao Zedong rented part of Yale in China's former medical clinic in 1919. Article 120's anniversary of Yale, China. Picture of priest in Vatican is of Mao. See article of the New York Times on December the 24th. How fitting, Brett, 1969. As I am no subscriber of the New York Times, I am sorry, I cannot validate on this because I did not want to have uh, the New York Times uh, as a subscriber. Yeah, But uh, at least I found some hints that uh, this uh, young Mao Zedong, of course, uh, had something to do with the Vatican. At least it was appreciated. Shed slide on, on Mao painting. Italian painter Luigi Carnevali like Carnival, 86, shows a sketch in Rome Wednesday, which he says he used to make painting representing Chinese leader Mao Zedong. Carnivali says he based his work on a picture of a Chinese-made painting of Mao as a crusading youth. The old painting by Carnivali now hangs in the Vatican press room, Associated Press via photo via cable from Rome. 1969. 1969 being the time when Mao Zedong was in power in control of the People's Republic of China. So the Vatican, as the only sovereign state, according to their own interpretation, they are displaying Mao Zedong. <laughs> That is that picture here. And that's not far away from, I think, yeah, not far away from that depiction here, Brett. And what else would you uh, figure out is important in that picture here? Oh, yeah, the fasci. Mm -hmm. it, it looks like, huh? Yeah, right. It looks mm -hmm. like. Oh, he's hiding the axe head behind his back. <laughs> yeah, but it looks like. Yeah. And of course, he's uh, kind of a, on, on top of a mountain, huh? Hmm. Mm. Yeah, that is a rather odd fasci because it, mm. it looks like it tapers at the end. 
Yeah, it could. I, I thought at first glance, I thought it could be an umbrella or something, but uh, it's clearly not ah, raining. Ah, yeah, it's, right. It's, it's clearly not raining, yeah. But uh, to be the leader of the Communist Party in the People's Republic of China, being a communist state when communism was invented by the Jesuits, and this picture has been seen on display in the Vatican in Rome. My, 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 come on, what could it mean? What could it mean? It could mean that Mao Zedong was Jesuitically trained. And that's, I think, it's not the big secret, and it's been venerated, appreciated in the Vatican. So, is it far fetched to assume that the Vatican runs China? Oh, man. As well as the United States? I think it's a given once you understand how the world works these days, Michael. Um, and that's, that's assuming that. Uh, our listeners are familiar with the background that we come from. Uh, actually, uh, one of the really great series that was put out by Tom Fress some years ago on the Global Vatican, I think that is probably the de facto uh, series that everyone should be familiar with and listen to because uh, Tom goes through that book and it becomes vividly apparent where the power comes from and it doesn't come from the uh, that uh, that dome sitting here in Washington DC it's uh, no it, it comes from Europe doesn't it Michael mm -hmm. yeah it comes from the Vatican so yeah Interesting, Michael. Very interesting. Yeah, so you can do your own research, but I'm just presenting some facts here and you can draw your own conclusions. Yeah, I I don't have anyone's brain to connect the dots. Everybody is connecting the dots in his own subjective way. According to his age, experience, <sighs> doctrines, what else? Yeah, so I'm just saying that there is a strong hint that the Vatican is running the entire world through the United Nations. And then when you see there are some favorite countries in the United Nations uh, which have uh, so-called veto rights, so they can say, no, 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 <laughs> that's uh, veto, uh, veto recht. Is it right, veto? No, veto recht English. What does that mean? Right of veto. Aha. So, right of veto, right of veto, United Nations. Vetoes yeah. with an O, vetoes with an O, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. You will see it in English now. The United Nations Security Council veto power is the power of the five. <coughs> five? Huh? What could that mean? Five? Permanent members of the United Nations Security Council called China, France, Russia, the United Kingdom and the United States. There you go. They also have to be nuclear weapon states under the terms of the Treaty on Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons. You'll see it if you have followed my or our, sorry, if you have followed our Science's New Religion series on the atom, you see that nuclear powers have to be taken with a big grain of salt. But um, you see that every weapon is destructive, of course, and they will, have, will come up with more new weapons, which, is, which are not known to the general public. Uh, why I am speculating about it is that uh, I think that uh, some major findings of, for example, a famous uh, European inventor who died in the 1940s uh, have not made public yet. So they have much more technology than they will ever submit. But uh, it's just five permanent members, and China is among them. It seems that being an atomic power is not the mandatory thing, uh, because uh, there are other countries who have uh, allegedly nuclear power, but are not in that uh, veto power, five permanent members, for example, Pakistan and India. And uh, some rumors say Israel. Hmm? So that is my conclusion here. So when I know that uh, there is something messy about it, which looks like uh, fasci, and we know that uh, Mao Zedong has been trained by the Jesuits, 
Yeah, you do not have to believe me. Yeah, you can look it up in yourself. Mao Zedong and Yale China. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, if you look it up, if you look up Mao trained Jesuits, uh, then you will find it also. Let me have a look here. I think that has been covered also. You will find it everywhere. You will find it everywhere. Was the political public of the Jesuits trained to rule the Communist Republic of China through dictatorship and a personality cult and to play a role in the opium heroin trade connected to Yale in China? In 1927, he led the Autumn Harvest Uprising and fought the Chinese nationalist movement on Chiang Kai-shek. In 1949, he proclaimed the People's Republic of China. The same year, members of Chiang Kai-shek's Kuomintang Party moved to Burma and Taiwan to set up the Golden Triangle drug trade. So... There's much money to earn in drugs. Mm -hmm. From 1966, he launched the Cultural Revolution, costing the lives of 20 million people. Yeah? So, make up your own mind. It gets not better when we think about Chiang Kai-shek's, because Chiang Kai-shek was the so-called opponent of uh, Mao Zedong. So that's Chiang Kai-shek, a political republic of the Jesuits. So they play both sides. Hey, Brett, what do you see on that picture here? Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, decorated Decorations, soldier. yes. 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 Big I, time. Highly, highly decorated, yeah. yeah. Trained to rule the Republic of China and to play a role in the heroin trade. He played a role in the Chinese national movement and fought the communists of Mao Zedong. Yeah, he was a political public as well as Mao Zedong, so they play both sides. In 1927, he married Sun Mei Ling, chairwoman of Fu Zheng Catholic University of the Jesuits. She appeared on the cover of Time and supervised military aviator and Scottish right mason Claire Lee Chenault, CIA from America. <laughs> Yeah, you see, they play both sides. And we are talking about 1949. Now we are more than 73, 4 years later. Yeah, look at here on the Time magazine. Soon my Ling, 100 women of the year. Well, there you go. There you go. So they play both sides, man and wife of the year. A sacrifice should not be regarded as too costly. Mm -hmm. So China is a country in Asia founded in 1911 as a republic and then in 1949 as a People's Republic of China, but uh, actually it's just a forced communism here. Population of 1.4 billion people. Second, founded in 1911? As a republic, oh, as a republic, you see that the, the China, you see that history of China here, yeah, uh, has been. I think that is the early records found in 2100 before Christ as a Xia dynasty. They had those dynasties and emperors and all that, all the alike. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then you have the founder of Taoism, where we will go into this uh, in a few sessions, maybe if that session here will be appreciated. Then you got the Han, the Tan, the Venetian, etc. Han Tan dynasty. In 1300, the Venetian Italy bred Marco Polo visits China. And I, I knew a remark from my um, from my uh, calendar that uh, Marco Polo uh, was coming out of China and we reported uh, of uh, he has been seen dragons there. Huh? Then you got the Ming Dynasty building the Great Wall of China and the Forbidden City using of sacred ge geometry. And then you got the Jesuits graduate gained influence during the Min dynasty with Matteo Ricci. Yeah, we will go into this as well. And then you got the Qing dynasty and then you got uh, uh, Louis XIV, that was uh, the, the Sun King, huh? 
Louis XIV sent six Jesuits to Kangxi Emperor in Beijing, Peking, including Bouvet and Gabrillon, led by Fontenay. And then the Emperor in 1715 expelled the Jesuits. Mm -hmm. And the British Empire in 1839 and the Jesuits conquer India and China through the Opium Wars. You see that <laughs> it is unbelievable, but uh, they drugged the people and the people were then uh, being intoxicated and uh, dependent on that stuff. Opium is traded by the Sassoon family and uh, S and B, you know what that means, huh? Skull and Bones families like Russell to demoralize the Chinese population and making them addicted. Okay, that's of course, it's it's hard to um, verify, but uh, many, many people are addicted to something today. Then you got 1856, the second opium war. You got the Boxer Rebellion, the third opium war in Beijing. The Jesuit Mark Siambo founds Aurora. Aurora means uh, the sunrise. University, the Jesuit missions are replaced by MIP, the Paris Foreign Missions. Oh, Bertrand Russell, yeah. Oh my, oh my, oh my. All these people here, yeah. Warlord area with the triads and green gang thriving from opium trade in China. So it, you see that also the Chinese so called mafia here, um, they are all into this uh, drug uh, business because that's uh, much, much money uh, there to. to, to um, to spend. 1921, the Peking Man publicity stunt, interpreted as Homo Rectus by Christian Darwinist or Catholic Darwinist Pierre Tyler de Chardin, started out of Asia theory and modern Chinese archaeology with premier of China. Of China, sorry. And then Je Jesuits establishing Jesuits establishing Chinese civil war, also uh, sometimes of of, of course uh, against uh, Japan. Chiang Kai-shek, we have talked about him. Then 1937, war between China and Japan. So China was a victim and was uh, partially uh, being suppressed by the Japanese. It's interesting. Many people really only think that, oh, Japan uh, took on uh, United States in the Pearl Harbor incident. But uh, they were uh, at war with China uh, also. Yeah. So then Mao Zedong in 1943, he was uh, then ruling as a dictator. And in 19... Uh, 49, he established the People Republic of China and all this, uh, yeah, <laughs> this, I will go into this, of course, but uh, I will go into this, I will go into this, I can tell you, we will go into this, we will go into this. But you see that now China introduces a social credit system for digital slavery in Wuhan. <laughs> I do not make any comment to that. China plays a big role in rituals as a step towards a totalitarian world state with the Chinese model as a blueprint for the global economy. Yeah, so far so bad, huh? I was very surprised to learn, Brad, when I thought about, well, let's take a look what the Jesuits did in China. Mm -hmm. Because in German Wikipedia, I found this article about Zeittafel Jesuiten in China, which means the timetable of the Jesuits in China. But it was <laughs> not available in any other language. Wow. Yeah. Usually it is it is here, but yeah, I could not uh, I could not find it. So therefore, I could I could look it up here manually. Timetable Jesuits in China. Although, in the meantime, it's only missions, Jesuit missions. Yeah, but uh, I have um, just made it to uh, retranslate it into English. So, Jesuits in Time are Timeline provides a quick overview of the long checkered history of the missionary activity of the Society of Jesu in China, beginning in the 16th century, of course, because then it was when the um, Jesuit order has been uh, erected during the Ming dynasty and ending in the late 20th century with the founding of the Chinese province of the Jesuits in 1991. Uh, what a heck of a script. Mm -hmm. Which is only available in German. 
My, my, my. <laughs> yeah. So, the Jesu Hui Tsongia Sheng is one of the provinces of the society in Jesu. She had been founded in April 1991 um, for the apostolical work on the Chinese mainland in Hong Kong, Macau, and the Republic of China, meaning Taiwan. Um, the Jesuits have been. Uh, uh, until we were in China until being restrained by 1773 through Pope Clement the 14th. That was not the total breakdown of the Catholic Church in China, but the engagement of the Jesuits and the Chinese Roman Catholic communities were abrupt coming to an end. Mm -hmm. So, table of contents. 1552. We know when the Jesuits have been erected, that was 1514. 1552. Brad, this is 12 years after the Jesuits have been established by the Pope. Wow. The Jesuit Francis Xavier finally finds a Chinese man who promises to transport him from the island of Sanjian, Shangguan, to Canton for 350 crusaders of pepper. Wow. November the 21st, a Jesuit Francis Xavier you know that um, Jörg Lissmann famously um, has an opinion, which I think uh, could be shared, that uh, the current Pope Francis has uh, chosen his name not because Francis of Assisi, but of saint Francier Xavier from the Jesuits, because, of course, Francis is a Jesuit. So this Jesuit, Francis Xavier, celebrates a requiem mass for a smuggler. Yeah drug trade, huh? Smuggler on San Chien Island and then falls ill. 1565. The Jesuits settle in Macau. 1572. The Jesuits open a school in Macau, reading, writing the later St. Paul's College. Remember? Michael, Michael, by the way, I actually have a image from the internet that shows that they actually have some kind of Ah, some kind of admission that uh, that Pope Francis took his name from Francis Xavier. <clears throat> so, yeah, that that is a, a very very strong possibility. But it's just like everything else, you know. You have the esoteric view, and then you have the exoteric view. Mm -hmm. So they want everyone to think. Oh, yeah, Pope Francis took his name from Francis of Assisi because of, you know, the kind qualities and everything. But, you know, in, on the inside, that's a joke because the real reason, of course, is because of the co-founder of the Jesuit order, Francis mm -hmm. Xavier, right? Uh, do you have that source uh, ready available now? No, it's buried in my stuff. I'd okay, have to no dig problem. it out. Yeah, no it. problem, no problem. I have it. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll find it. Mm -hmm. But you see that now they are starting very, very fresh with that. So then Jesuit Matteo Ricci arrives in Macau. Macau then being the head of the Jesuits in, in, in China, so to speak, or in the area of China, in 1582. In 1583, Matteo Ricci entered China and built the first Jesuit house in Guangdong. 1588. Jesuit Alessandro Valignano, sounds like an Italian name, arrives in Macau, etc., 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 etc. Jesuit missionaries, missionaries, yeah, so they are been missionaries for so-called Christianity, which is Roman Catholicism and has nothing to do with Christianity, but the name. Yeah. So, 1594, already they are leaving Macau, so they are, they are central to India. Then Matteo Ricci is appointed superior of the Jesuit mission in China. 1600, so 17th century, the Jesuit mission in China becomes independent from that of Macau. Yeah, so they established a brand new center there. Let me take a look. Let me take a look. 
1624, Jesuit missionaries Antonio Freire de Andrada and Manuel Marquez arrive in Zamparang, Kingdom of Guj, where fertile land is irrigated by canals. They are welcomed by the king, a Buddhist. They believe to find traces of an ancient Christianity. Yeah, you, yeah okay, no comment. Um, 1626, uh, the superior general of the Jesuits, Mutio Viacciacelli Antonio Freire de Andreda, tells of his journey to Tibet and describes the promising beginnings of the missions. So, okay. 1658, Martino Martini. Albert Dorville and 70 other companions, including Ferdinand Verbiest, arrive in Macau aboard the ship Bom Jesus de Viduderia from Lisbon. Means, uh, I think it is uh, Lisbon. Uh, yeah, Portugal. Huh? Yeah. Jesuit mathematician Johann Adam Schall von Bell dies in Beijing. <coughs> Jesuit Ferdinand Fabias prints his Compendium Astronomiae Organici, astronomical observations concerning Europe and China and Beijing, illustrated with xylographic plates. Hmm. In 1668, December the 29th, Emperor Kangxi sends Jesuit Ferdinand Fabias a copy of the Young Calendar for 1669, wishing to submit it for review. <laughs> 1669, in Beijing, the Jesuit Filippo Grimaldi reveals the effect of the magic lantern. You know what that is? That is it, that what is happening in Europe is then happening in, 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 uh, in China, Brad. When they were making the Gregorian calendar to replace the old Julian calendar, they did also make the calendar for the emperor in uh, China. And in 1669 in, in Beijing, uh, they revealed the effect of the magic lantern from Kirchner. Yeah? So they introduced, if you would like to say so, uh, the ancient manual television. To the Emperor Kangxi, it has been reported as, quote, this spectacle caused as much fear to those who were not aware of the artifice as to those who were informed about it. That is about television and control. You see, our George Orwell, Eric Arthur Blair, He had, he had installed a so-called Big Brother television screen in every household to control the people. And that's what the, the Jesuits, they have uh, learned from experience in 1669, that the spectacle of the television caused as much fear to those who were not aware of the artifice, so of the television itself, or of the magic lantern then, as to those who were informed about it. Because there was something moving. They were seeing moving pictures. If you go to the origin explaining of the Wikipedia, so exoteric, um, they say about the magic lantern, it was mostly developed in the 17th century and commonly used for entertainment purposes. There you got it right in front, Brad. Mm -hmm. e enter and entertain mentally. Mm -hmm. It was increasingly used for education during the 19th century. Since the 19th century or late 19th century, smaller versions were also mass produced as toys. In 1645, the first edition of German Jesuit scholar Athanasius Kircher's book Ars Magna Lucis e Ambre, we talked about that in the uh, conspiracy series, included a description of his invention, the steganographic mirror, a primitive projection system with a focusing lens and text on pictures painted on a concave mirror reflecting sunlight, mostly intended for long-distance communication. Yeah, in 1654, Belgian Jesuit mathematician André Taquet used Kirchner's technique to show the journey from China to Belgium of Italian Jesuit missionary Martino Martini. Tete. Hmm. The oldest known document concerning the magic lantern is a page on which Christian Huygens made ten small sketches of a skeleton taking off its skull. <laughs> It has to do with death, Brad, huh? Mm-hmm above which he wrote for representations by mean of convex glasses with the lamp. 
As this page was found between documents dated in 1659, it is believed to have been made in the same year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> who steals from whom? In 1669, the Emperor Kangji appoints Jesuit Ferdinand Fabiste as a director of the Office of Astronomy. In 1670, Jesuit Ferdinand Fabiste, by the way, coming from Belgium, builds a thermoscope in Beijing, which he gives to Emperor Kangji. Then, this same Jesuit realizes a complete world map in Beijing for the Emperor Kangji. Hmm. In 1687, the same Belgium Jesuit Ferdinand Fabiste receives an imperial order authorizing Jesuit mathematicians to enter China. And uh, I had a thought in that. Uh, maybe you'll remember of uh, my famous astronomer Tycho Brahe Brett. Mm -hmm. Now we talked about in the science sessions in astronomy. Don't worry, you get the English sessions here. Yeah. We know that a certain Johannes Kepler Prior to his death, he was in Prague and he was the official imperial astronomer and built an observatory in Czechoslovakia then. Prior to his death in 1601, he was assisted for a year by Johannes Kepler, who went on to use Tycho's data to, data to develop his own three laws of planetary motion. And afterwards, afterwards, after he died, and guess that Johannes Kepler whose motives would be to gain access to Tycho's laboratory and chemicals and his... Uh, uh, so that was the main uh, suspect because he died from mercury poisoning. And then it was in 1601 when he died. And then we switched to the 16th uh, something when these Jesuits, they are building some things in Beijing. Of course, they had the knowledge and maybe also some instruments from Tycho Bra. That would be my suggestion. It would be very, very time consuming to, to prove this. But uh, I can imagine that uh, they have uh, then the knowledge from uh, Tycho Bra in all these instruments. And they were just uh, recreating that in China, Brad. So Ferdinand Fabius receives an imperial order authorizing Jesuit mathematicians to enter China. An imperial order means by the emperor. Yeah? So he is in direct touch with the emperor. So a Jesuit called Ferdinand Fabius coming from Belgium is, has a direct connection with the emperor of China in 1687. In 1687 also appeared on the November the 2nd in a period order summons the French Jesuits to Beijing. And that's when I started looking up. I said, that is very interesting. You know, that is the first motor car, the Benz patent motor wagon number one, Brad. Oh, wow. In 1886. By the way, you know who steered that first car on this first trip? It was his wife. <laughs> that's, I think that's, uh, that's remarkable in that time, 1886, that a woman was uh, riding an automotive uh, thing. Okay? So, according to automotive historian G. N. Gergano, earlier steam vehicle experiments and innovations such as the stationary auto engine, every uh, Gasoline engine is an auto engine, except from diesel engines and, of course, now electric engines. But you see, running on so called fossil fuels. Yeah, fossil fuels. Um, the auto engine is for uh, petrol cars, Brett, and the, uh, the diesel, Rudolf Diesel, German one, invented the diesel engine. So the auto engine helped, so the petrol car helped make the inventions of the Benz Motorwagen possible, which he labeled as the first motor car due to its commercial production. The company Mercedes Benz also acknowledges there were forerunners to the motor wagon, but also stated that Benz was the first to develop a horseless carriage into a product for everyday use, which he then brought to market and as a result made his idea useful for the entire world. And then you read the article of Ferdinand Fabiste from Wikipedia. In comparison, Father Ferdinand Fabiste was a Flemish, 
Belgium, Jesuit missionary in China during the Qing dynasty. He was born in Belgium and da 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 da. He was an accomplished mathematician and astronomer who proved to the court of the Kangji Emperor that European astronomy was more accurate than Chinese astronomy. Aha. He then corrected the Chinese calendar and was later asked to rebuild and re-equip the Beijing Ancient Observatory, being given the role of head of the mathematical board and director of the observatory. So we're speaking about uh, 340 years or 330 years before. He became close friends with the Emperor Brett, who frequently requested his teaching in ge geometry, philosophy and music. During the 1670s, Fabius designed what some claim to be the first ever self-propelled vehicle. Many claim this as the world's first automobile, in spite of its small size and the lack of evidence that it was actually built. But the idea was coming from a Jesuit. It was coming from a Jesuit once again. And this is the symbol of Mercedes-Benz bread. That is the ancient symbol of Mercedes-Benz. And his cars were being famous as having a kind of a star on the grill, on the front of the car. And you think what is very obvious in that picture? The laurel. The laurel, yeah. And of course, uh, a triangular shape, so a trinity symbol. Yeah, so you have a trinity symbol and you have a laurel symbol, and uh, that uh, assumes uh, that it has something to do with the Roman, uh, yeah, with the Roman emperor, or holy Roman Reich of German nations. Yeah, so it's a laurel then. Mercedes-Benz on their own website, when it call, comes down to tradition of Mercedes-Benz on the birth of Mercedes-Benz, they tell you that. Uh, uh, it's a it's a, a three-folded star in a circle, and uh, this uh, signe has been recognized by people on the entire Earth, uh, uh, independent from which uh, land they are uh, coming and which uh, language they are speaking. This is a sign of luxury and innovation. It is one of the oldest uh, marks in the world, etc., etc., etc. Yeah, and that is the explanation of the law of wrath. The wreath, yes. yes. Yeah. Trace back to ancient Greece. In Greek mythology, the god Apollo, who is the patron of lyrical poetry, musical performance and skill-based athletics, is conventionally depicted wearing a law of wrath on his head and all three roads. Wrath were awarded to victors in athletic competitions, including for the ancient Olympics. For victors in athletics, they were made on wild olive trees known as Cotinos in the same winners, etc. In Rome, they were symbols of martial victory, <laughs> crowning a successful commander during his triumph. Whereas ancient laurels, wreath, are more depicted as a horseshoe shape, modern versions are usually complete rings. In common modern idiomatic idiomatic usage, a laurel wreath or crown refers to a victory. Yeah, crown, huh? <laughs> yeah, so I assume that it is an old Roman symbol that has been depicted on the Mercedes-Benz car. So it is no wonder that Mercedes-Benz is so, so, so successful. So. So once again, I come back to the uh, the Jesuits. Actually, the Jesuits are running, or is the military department of the Roman Catholic Church, and now they have the white as well as the black pope. So they are running the church. That is an old picture here with uh, Kaltenbach in center. Yeah, that must be him here. Yeah, but nevertheless. It is a military order, so China is governed as a military from a military order from the perspective that the Jesuits ever had access to the Chinese emperor since more than 300 years. What shall convince me if I know that Mao was Jesuitically trained, that Quan Kai Shek was Jesuitically trained? What shall me convince that they are now a people republic? Come on.
Yeah. So, and they rule through their education system because they are poisoning the minds of uh, billions, I have to say billions of people out there, without that they ever know something about the World Core curriculum, that they have all been set down to the Jesuitical rules of education, uh, which have been originated by the 1599 um, Jesuitical uh, school program called Brad. Mm. Oh, yeah, oh yeah, ratio studio. Ratio studio, a Latin name, <laughs> mm -hmm. a Latin name, and they worship uh, external externally they worship Jesus, internally they worship Lucifer. I'm not just quoting from a website here, which depicted that uh, Jesuit Jesus is also a program, and is not as you see that. But um, I don't care because uh, I can uh, sort out the facts and then we'll spit out the beans. Yeah? So if you really go down the uh, in history of uh, China, then you see that they were... I have much against that quote you've read. That is untrue because uh, Bible revelation had to roll out and uh, biblical revelation had to oh, be Oh, what article is this? It's just from a website who claims that all religion is, is, is the same uh, mind trap BS. Yeah, and they, of course, they uh, declare uh, Catholicism and Jesuits as a Christianity. Yeah, but I only need that website to quote from the, uh, the dates here and the year so that I can uh, establish here the facts that when was, when which war had been equipped and developed in, uh, in China. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. they, of course, depict uh, Martin Luther as a control opposition. I know that I have once uh, stated that, that here as incorrect, and I will do that uh, again before anybody insults us of uh, being not uh, Protestants, you see. That is... Uh, oh, yeah. Well, by the way, um, today is May 6th. Uh, for the past couple months, Michael and I have turned off the comments because we're tired of dealing with people that come up and say, oh, uh, yeah... Uh, Martin Luther was controlled, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, people can make their comments if they want, but uh, Michael and I don't have enough time to deal with this anymore, so we just shut it off. The, the problem also is, Brett, um, that I like to see some comments, but the problem I got with it is that when we go deep into religion, we will affect the emotions and feelings of people, and uh, so that will distract so many um, useless fights about things, uh, because I'm just understanding some things uh, different than other people and maybe these other people who are now being offended will see the things much more uh, relaxed soon afterwards yeah but it is just here it is not a biblical um we are not well biblical no teachers, matter yeah. what michael the, the problem is you know everyone's in a different walk in a different position in what they're doing in their lives and you know this is the fact that many of us when we first stumble into, you know, uh, big, huge problems and it hurts to the core. It's a very painful process to lose your worldly view of politics and religion and all that. And everyone's at a different stage. And, you know, it's kind of a quagmire, isn't it, Michael? We're all coming together on this forum here on YouTube. Mm. And, you know, there's people that are going to be spitting fire at us for the first couple months. But then later, oh, yeah, that's right. It's actually the world does work that way. Mm. Uh, but yeah, you got to do your own research. You got to prove it for yourself. We're not here to tell you what to think. We're just here to point out some facts, right, Michael? Yeah, and so that uh, you see that we can do that over and over again. But I'm just will uh, scroll down the things here so that you really see what's what's it up. Mm. What's it about? Uh, my problem is that I can't recommend any website because I really do lack the time to go in every nitty detail. You see that if I go down to 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 Matthew and, and all the stuff, you see that will take uh, days. And and you, usually the Holy Spirit is there to guide you in your research. 
Yeah, and we are just providing here some thumbnails, so to speak. Yeah, so that you can start your own investigation from this. Yeah, you see that everywhere the Jesuits have been in the front line actually of the Roman Catholic Church to conquer China. Look at the dates here. Look at the dates. You see that Jesuits are confessors to the Habsburg emperors in Europe actually. 1550. Theatrical performances. Catholic Church forces Spain to attack England with the Spanish Armada and plans the Babington plot with Jesuit John Ballard. Um, yeah, the Babington plot and all that stuff. Yeah, you, you see this everywhere. Massacre everywhere. It's where to start. But it is very important to learn, I think, that uh, China is under the yoke of the Jesuits since hundreds of years, actually. They established their calendar, they established mathematicians, they established astronomy, they established so many inventions. They even have their own missions in Macau, in mainland China. It's everywhere. It is not limited to Italy, Europe or the United States or what else. No. You see, in 1582, the Jesuits sent missionaries to China under Matteo Ricci with Portuguese, yeah, Lisbon, Lissabon and French Jesuits. And later Ferdinand Fabius, which happened to be a Belgian guy. Yeah. So what do we expect from a country from the East which have five pentagrams in a red flag and is venerating a dragon? What do we expect from them? These are the same poor people as they are in the West. We are not judging anything, but we are. I am convinced that uh, the communism of Soviet Russia and the communism of the People's Republic of China was done on a purpose to hide it uh, from the Western countries so that they can try out and do some things and uh, try out how to control millions and even billions of people. When you think about a world government, a world religion and, and the end times when the beast system has taken over, what is that else than communism? Am I far fetched, Brett? No, that's right. So it is 1586 already that were the guidelines, then in 1599 it took officially. Uh, Place the radio ratio studiorum, yeah, yeah. Ferdinand Fabius, yeah, that is very very key figure here. Matteo Ricci, Ferdinand Fabius. It's it's everywhere actually. It's everywhere. Missions to Paraguay, owned by the Spaniards, experiment with communism. The Jesuits learned to control wandering tribes of cannibals, <laughs> Canaanites, huh? who worship the moon and believe in the immortality of the soul. The Jesuits develop a dictionary of the language of the Chiquitos, put the Indians in colonies, teach them agriculture and Oh my Roman Catholicism, guys. But this page of how interesting it is, Brad, it is also the disinformation page because they mix everything up to get rid of all your religious beliefs. It reminds sure. me of it reminds me of some other author which I don't want to mention now, but you know absolutely who I mean, who's coming up with all the Jesuitical artifacts and talks nothing about the Bible. Huh? They create a mini republic with an Indian as an official officer, sorry, supported by Philip III of Habsburg. Thirty Jesuit missions in Argentina, Brazil, and Paraguay became self-sufficient colonies with 100,000 Guarani with only two priests per mission. They work as a fifth column through infiltration, blackmail through confessional secrets. No private property is allowed. You see? What was it? A kind of a papal order? Um, caritas in veritate, huh? Mm -hmm. Everything is state property. All proceeds go to Jesuits. Yes, of course, it's the Roman Catholic Church and their papal bulls, which are in effect, in effect, since the time on when they have been pronounced. And it's getting worse than that, because you see that Jesuits' missions in Argentina 
yeah, what do we expect of Argentina? Yeah, Argentina is uh, the land where the current pope, the current pope comes from, uh, Bergoglio. Yeah, that's Argentina. Jetzt nicht, not now. Argentina. Yeah, if you do not know all these. Uh, you don't need anything to know but their flag. Oh, it's so dark here, I have to switch on the lights now. Argentina flag, Brad. What else could it be? Huh? Yep, Jesuits. Jesuits. Yeah, it's Jesuits. Compare this to that. There you go. That's it. It's very easy. It's so easy. And so in their communism, no private property is allowed. Everything is state property. All proceeds go to Jesuits. Yeah, that's the history of the Jesuits. And of course, what do they do? They proclaim that they are all doing that and they live very poor uh, just uh, because they are the society of Jesus. Yeah, it's not the Jesus of the Bible. But the Jesus of the Bible does not allow any killing. Yeah. Yeah, controlled opposition. It's very interesting to go into every nitty-gritty. For example, that in 1639, Jesuits are ex exiled in Nagasaki, Japan, after Shimabara revolt by Catholic peasants. Yeah, now you know why we talked about the Jesuits in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. We are talking now about Japan, not China, of course. Yeah. You see, the Jesuits were on the forefront of so-called science, or science so-called. Yeah? But what they do actually is they distract the people with their astronomy, they distract the people with their entertainment system called Antonius Kirchner's Magic Lantern, or cinema, or television, a vision from far away. Yeah, that's what they do, they distract the people. They divide the people also, divide and conquer. Yeah? So we could go on and on and on, but uh, it's just that I have to I have to take a stance for that. Uh, I feel sorry for the Chinese people. I feel really sorry for the Chinese people. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, what the Jesuits. Yeah, so when the Pope Clement uh, the Ninth abolished the Jesuit order, he died one year later. That should be not a coincidence. That's not a coincidence. It's unbelievable how influential this society is. It's unbelievable. But you see, on the other hand, they had uh, centuries of time centuries of time centuries bread it's yeah it's really not that easy to uh comprehend how corrupt the world has become because of yeah. this or yeah. you see jesuit trained karl marx jesuit trained joseph stalin jesuit trained mao zedong where do you want to start it's it's everywhere actually it's everywhere and it's coming closer and closer and closer hmm <laughs> you see it's everywhere uh, Catherine the Great, Vladimir Lenin <laughs> it's everywhere it's, it's yeah, you see that even Kennedy had the Jesuitical Bible, he had the Dewey Rames Bible. Yeah. 
it's, it's, it's everywhere. The word runs on Jesuitism. It's not the exception, Brad, it's the rule. Mm -hmm. They hide like a wolf in clothes sheeping, like the Fabian Society. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, they put it right in your face, don't they? Yeah, Jesuit uh, Castro as president of Colombia. Cuban Revolution with Jesuit Fidel Castro. Yeah, okay, so two Castros. Sorry. Can't know any everybody. Yeah, Jesuitic trained you. <laughs> Jackie Kennedy, yes. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's it's everywhere actually. Jimmy Carter, Brzezinev, Brzezinski. Not Brzezinev, Brzezinski. Yeah. It's everywhere. Everywhere. And now you, you got the most famous uh, Jesuit in America, maybe Anthony Charles Fauci, huh? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. modern day. Yeah. yeah, 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 Anthony Fauci, yes. Absolutely right. Yeah, Anthony Fauci. Interesting, they mentioned Trump is Jesuit trained here too. Yes, Anthony Fauci, Jesuit trained media actor. Hmm. Yeah, and this is very interesting here. That's oh, Jesuits, Robert Kennedy Jr., Donald Trump, and Steve Bannon. Hey, mm -hmm. Steve Bannon, I mm -hmm. know this character. Mm -hmm. Played a played the role of controlled opposition against the fascist regime with health and security as excuse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They control both sides. They did it in China in the 1940s with Mao Zedong and Chiang Kai-shek. And now we are 80 years later in the United States with your pentagrams and uh, with your so-called Freemason history and uh, foundation, which is nothing else than also a distraction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they control both sides. They control both They control sides. all sides. All sides, yeah. Yeah, so. <laughs> gorillas everywhere. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, everywhere. it's your main gorilla. Yeah. Huh? Oh, yeah. Joseph Biden. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. Psyops Call no everywhere. man father. That's what the Bible says. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes, yes you yes. have a Jesuit interview with uh, mm -hmm. Joseph Biden with this, mm -hmm. you know, call, mm -hmm. calling mm -hmm. his mm -hmm. his controller. Yes, father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Jesuits have always infiltrated and trained their puppets through the education system. Ratio Studiorum, all big names in politics, even Kennedy, of course, in every country are educated as Jesuitical schools. Everywhere. And don't think that for one bit that it is not happening in China, although it has not depicted here in Russia. It's the same. It is the same, actually. The mightiest emperor who has hidden the Jesuits during their um, forbidden uh, years was Catherine the Great in Russia, in St. Petersburg. Come on. It's not that far-fetched Yeah, that Russia and China are long under the control. And Russia will be needed for their full play on the apocalypse. That's my guess. Yeah, Gok and Magog and all that stuff, which is uh, is totally incorrect. But you see that usually people cannot t tell right from wrong if they do not read the Bible. Yeah, they own all the secret services. You see, they had hundreds of years. Come on, the Jesuit order is now de facto and de jure established in 1540. That is 483 years. Come on. Yeah, they have an obsession with fulfilling biblical prophecies. Yes, they have been mentioned in the biblical prophecy with their capital 
city of Italy and, and uh, with, with, the, with Rome, with the Vatican. Vat Brad, what is Vatican City other than Rome? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's on the right. same ground. It is on That's the same right. ground. They designed the French Revolution, the American Revolution, World War One, World War Two, and the current World War Three. It's it's everywhere. It's everywhere. You see that there's no ex no excuse, and it's 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 everywhere. Biden administration, yes, it's it's everywhere. Trump administration, you see. Uh, then it's 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 the Democrats, then it's the Republicans. This is just ping pong. Yeah, but it's a play. As long as there are voters who are going to vote for something, um, they have been so-called democratically elected. The only thing that would destroy that system would be when everybody says, no, we are not voting any anymore because it is a fraud system. We want to be Christians and that will not happen according to the book of Revelation, according to biblical prophecy, all will go down the drain. All will go down the drain. And so you can't escape anything if you just move out of the uh, United States to Mexico, to South America, to Finland, to Asia. Maybe you can delay things, but sooner or later it will happen. And I do not think that you want to leave your loved ones behind. Yeah, so you can't escape this, in my humble opinion. It's not meant to be, because it's meant to be that biblical prophecy has to fulfill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are Jesuits everywhere. Of course, because otherwise the Bible would not fulfill. It was just a small um, window open, which happened to be the uh, Protestant Revolution then, or the deadly wound, which healed. Yeah. So it's everywhere. All the peace people are into the materialism. They will uh, be, uh, yeah, supervised by the Jesuits and by the Roman Catholic Church, and uh, in the least instance, on their uh, anti-Christian, anti-Christ, satanic mindset. That we are believing in Christ, though are we believing in Satan? Because you can't believe in Christ if you do not believe in Satan. You can't believe in God if you don't believe in the Bible. So if you believe in the Bible, it's clearly depicted that there is uh, that there are good powers or what else, the Holy Spirit, and that there are evil powers or evil spirits, fallen angels, demons, devils, what else you would like to name them? Yeah, but this is just a play. We are not uh, your significant uh, other. Uh, might not be aware of that, but you see, it's just a play among men, among people, but it's actually a spiritual war battle going on. We are not fighting against the flesh and blood, we are fighting against spiritual beings. Or, if you would like to, to use an, uh, <laughs> a more easier sense, you are fighting the dragon. Yeah, when we go, go back here to, the, uh, to, to China, we are fighting the dragon. Lebanon Harari family. I know of a very special Harari guy. Oh my, these people, these people, not saying that he's related to them, but these people. You see, all the institutions here, it's... Where to start? Where to start? Africa, everywhere. Yeah. I think that if the people would really see that the entire world runs on conspiracy, then they would really see that it is it's going out of hand and it's much more it, it's too big for people to comprehend. The, the lies also are, very, are totally too big. If all the media is saying the entire thing, then it must be true. You see, that is a false argument. Yeah, but. Uh, people believe in the things that people and uh, scientists and teachers they are telling them and that's why they get the majority of people get them while they're young so get them while they are in university in school in kindergarten yeah so you have to get them there and after that their faith in god has been erased mostly not all of them but jesus said yet we have to 
walk on the narrow path and not on the broad way. Yeah. So it is just clear to me what's happening in, uh, in China because uh, they are controlling the entire world through the United Nations. You know, the United Nations is the one world system already. Where to start, Brad? Where to start? Yeah. They are all in Catholic uh, orders here, like Queen Elizabeth, Beatrix, Rothschilds, Habsburg, Alan Dulles, John F. Kennedy's father. You see that they are all into this. Yeah, yeah. You see that nobody will be successful in this world uh, without uh, obeying the Catholic Trinity, like Trigema or Adidas with its three stripes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and when I came across the fact that uh, the Jesuits they were first uh, setting a foot on the China region in uh, Macau, and that's not very far away from Hong Kong. That's not far away from Hong Kong. My, my, my. We are soon closing down that session here. Um, at least I would like to state a quote from a book. The book is called The Engineer Corps of Hell or Rome's Sappers and Miners, containing the tactics of the militia of the Pope, meaning the Jesuit order, or the secret manual of the Jesuits and other matter intensely interesting, especially to the Freemason and lovers of civil and religious liberty where with us whoever dispersed throughout the globe. Uh, you have to take that with a grain of salt because um, the author sells, uh, proclaims himself to be a 32 degree Freemason called Edwin A. Sherman. Past Grand Register of the Grand Consistory of the 32 degree of the ancient and accepted Scottish Rite of Freemasonry of the State of California and Secretary of the Mason Veteran Association of the Pacific Coast. Ah, and this book has been available on archive.org and uh, there is a quote in that book on page 33. Historical testimonies. Tamburini, the general of the Jesuits, in 1720, allegedly said to the Duke of Brusac, See, sir, from this chamber I govern not only Paris, but to China, not only to China, but to all the world, without anyone to know how I did it." Unquote. And you find that quote many times on the internet, but I wanted to present at least one book where this uh, quotation has been printed. And this is that book, which you have to take on with a grain of salt. But you see from uh, the historical view, what they achieved and how close they were to the Chinese emperor, even hundreds of years ago, that there is nothing left to um, doubt that the Jesuitical and Roman Catholic influence in general uh, is not to be underestimated in China, Brett. It's, it's so obvious that uh, now the Chinese system will soon, step by step, piece by piece, take over the entire world. So that, uh, that it will come a, a kind of uh, solidarity of common good and, and all that stuff to prevent nature and uh, for the prosperity of all and what else that will come upon. So yeah, Michael, it's pretty disgusting. This week, I found an article about the uh, media is praising the um, genocide of millions of people, billions of people will be better. Uh, it's just so disgusting. It just this world that we live in today is just it's a shame, but you know, things are not turning out the way that maybe we all hoped they would turn out. You know, it's just the opposite, but I think it's God's way of showing us that, you know, heaven is not on earth. <laughs> no, definitely not. No, definitely not. not. Although there are a lot of really nice things on earth. God created a wonderful place. Yeah. However, yeah. there are problems. Okay, do my stuff. Yeah, and you see, uh, the, the, the problem in it is that uh, they are doing that for centuries. So the, most people yeah. are totally unaware. 
Yeah, you see, um, can you imagine when there was a revolutionary group, so that they were then created the so-called uh, revolution um, for for uh, for the for the Chinese? It happened in nineteen. You you, you just take a guess at at the number nine. The abyss, the angel of the abyss, nine. Oh, 11. No, 11, yeah. Okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the the uh, the revolution and the end of the Opium War. And then uh, on the 1st January in 1912, they have uh, found it then on the 1st January. Ah, uh, okay. The, the, the Roman Gregorian calendar, the 1st January. It is not depicted here, I'm sorry. But the 1st January in 1912, they have started the Chinese Republic. So the revolution started in 1911. Of course, 911 is revolution. Huh? The angel of the bottomless pit. Yeah? Satan was the one who's, who started the first revolution against God. Ah, but where to start? Where to start? So in 2018, I read that the Roman Catholic Church, they were having... Um, uh, a delegation uh, about uh, dealing with China about a concordat of the Roman Catholic Church. I have not looked it up if they were already uh, been uh, taken into uh, taken place. But uh, yeah, there are things uh, yeah in China which are also not been uh, reported here because China, oh, everybody knows, and has been censored, huh? Everybody knows has been censored. Mm -hmm. Opium war. Opium wars, come on. 1911 opium wars. Yeah, opium wars. 1911 revolution, yeah, of course. Revolution. Revolution 911. Revelation 911 about the revolution. Oh, yet, uh, uh, things are getting out of hand. We have to stop the session very soon because my concentration is lacking. Yeah, 911. Revelation 911 once again. The angel of the bottomless pit. Satan. Been known under different variant names, Satan. Yeah, they claim there is something else. There is a special force, a special force of life. In uh, in Europe, they say it's all gone. It has something to do with creativity, with sexuality. In Japan, it's called Reiki. You can heal people with your hands. And uh, let me tell you, I did that also in my youth. Yeah. In Indian, it's called Prana, and in China, it's called Chai. Chi, C H I. Ah, so they have a special force in China. It's Chi. Oh, we will go into so many things in the future. If you would like to ask to to continue with that subject here, it's uh, it's really interesting. It's really interesting. But uh, I have ten pages left. Uh, maybe we we might make a short uh, excerpt here. The Jesuits first settled down in Macau. <laughs> Brett. Mm -hmm. Portugal. A former Portuguese colony, but Macau actually is uh, in the neighborhood of Hong Kong, so it's it's very close to China. Yeah, mm. look at the symbolism with five pentagrams. Five stars again. Yeah. yeah. And so with the three trinity yeah. like like Trigema uh, and, 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 and Daimler Benz, Mercedes Benz and all that stuff, it's every time the same. Yeah. Of course, that looks like a sea flower here, could be sea. Former Portuguese colony, the, uh, the territory of Portuguese Macau was first leased as a trading post by the Ming Dynasty in 1557. Mm -hmm. And uh, the colony remained under Portuguese rule until 1999, until it was transferred to China. Brett, can you, by uh, chance, can you think about another very, 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 very small state which was also being transferred to China? Mm, um, you know, my mind was on the symbolism above, Michael. Isn't that a lotus flower? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, okay, uh, 1999. Uh, what was your question again, Michael? In 1999, the colony remained under Portuguese rule, speaking of Macau, until 1999 when it was transferred to China. But there was another very, very small state which was then been transferred from the British Empire back to China. 
And that I is don't know. Hong Kong. Oh. Hmm. So Macau, as well as Hong Kong, is a special administrative region of China, which maintains separate governing and economic systems from those of mainland China under the principle of one country, two systems. The unique blend of Portuguese and Chinese architecture in the city's history center led to its inscription in the UNESCO World Heritage List in 2005. Um, this is not a compliment, huh? This is uh, Aldous mm. Huxley and his uh, followers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is Macau. It's a flag here, and this is uh, Macau here. This very small, very small here. Location of Macau within China. China is it's bigger than the United States, and that tells a lot, I think. Yeah, that tells a lot. And this has also been the first uh, station, the first uh, mission of the Jesuits was in Macau. The first known written record of the name Macau rendered as Amagang is found in a letter dated 20 November 1555. The local inhabitants believe that the sea goddess Matsu had blessed and protected the harbor and called the waters around the Ama temple using her name. Has something to do with the uh, religion here. Hmm. Mm. And they had in 1911 a reform of the Portuguese orthography. Yeah. Then been named. Merchants first established a trading post in Hong Kong waters. So Macau, Jesuitically based, served as a trading post in Hong Kong waters. Of course, it has something to do with money. Hmm. During the Second World War, the Empire of Japan did not occupy the colony and generally respected Portuguese neutrality in Macau. Brad. Mm -hmm. A big alarm bell, I would say. Mm hmm. So the Empire of Japan did not occupy the colony because they respected Portuguese neutrality in Macau. But I can tell you, they suppressed Hong Kong, which happened to be then under the British uh, suppression. However, after Japanese troops captured a British cargo ship in Macau waters in 1943, Japan installed a group of government advisors as an alternative to military occupation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they were very, very concerned, maybe also because uh, Macau was uh, that Jesuitical outpost there. Yeah, and here you see Macau and here you see Hong Kong. And this is mainland China here. So you could step by foot from China to Hong Kong. That's Macau. Macau has been uh, under Portuguese rule until 1999. And Hong Kong, that's the flag of British Hong Kong, so one of the outposts of the British Empire. Officially, the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region of the People's Republic of China, SAR, now, yeah, since uh, 1997, sorry, not 1999, 1997, is a city and special administration region of China. And Hong Kong is also a major global financial center. Yes. And that's why it is very important because also, of course, they got several harbors there. And of course, uh, that is a very, very big uh, shipping trade market going on there. One of the most developed cities in the world. Yes, Hong Kong. As of 2021, it's the world's ninth largest export and etc. etc. So they serve, uh, which god they are serving bread? Oh, the one, the god of this world, of course. Yes. Mammon. That's it's called right. Mammon. Yes, it's, it's, it's called. Uh, yeah, it's Matthew 6 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other or else you will hold to the one and despise the other you cannot serve god and man mm -hmm. it is very very interesting verse which will happen to be extremely important in the future mm -hmm. because hong kong is home to the third highest number of billionaires of any city in the world imagine that 
So that's about China now. And maybe you thought about, well, it was interesting, but uh, we, we know that there will be something coming out of China. Maybe it's a kind of a great reset, although I think that uh, if the great reset uh, would be that great reset that uh, you and I would expect from reading a book, then it would not be the great reset because they will not uh, give out all the secrets. So I think there would be something else happening in the future. So I would not rely on that book of Klaus Schwab read. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, right. it's also a kind of a controlled opposition thing that you control the thinking of your opposition. Mm -hmm. Right. So why would you tell your enemies or who else your, your plans? Yeah, that's, uh, that's, uh, I do not think that everything will be set according to their, to their route. But um, I got another thing in mind with uh, China, because usually I said that is a mixture here of satanic media agenda together with science as a new religion and together with conspiracies. Well, how would it be if we would mix everything together in with the Bible? So we have four items in it. And you think about, OK, that I don't know what he's talking about, but we did come the route from uh, the history of China down to the Jesuits in their outpost in Macau and then in Hong Kong being the the, the city of, of, uh, of, of trade and all the stuff which been hand, been handed over from the British Empire to the so-called People Republic of China in 1997. What's all about? Well, if I would go into this, I would create extreme huge amount of enemies all over the place because there are also some idols in the East. Yeah. Mm, mm. And so Ezekiel 8, of course, but you really see that uh, we are not judging people. There are no Western values. There is only truth. And people from the East, they're not superior nor inferior. They are just people. They are God's creations. Yeah, God's creatures. They are man made in the image of God. So I'm not judging anybody if he is red, black, yellow or what else. But you have to realize that also the Chinese people have betrayed big time because they think or they thought that uh, the uh, Christianity that the Jesuits gave them, um, that is, uh, that's the real gospel. And that's also the danger to society these days when they think that oh yeah the science uh, they will absolutely be, be correct because all the media are promoting the science and so therefore the majority has uh, always uh, the uh, correct interpretation of things and they trust the science and uh, also the science has been controlled by the Jesuits you have seen it with your own eye and you can look it up if you study the history of China so that's it for me I'm handing it over to my beloved brother Brad thank you for having me Maranatha Wow, wow, Michael, Michael I, did I did not expect, expect to find your, your research, research to uh, uh, all of these Jesuit, Jesuit origins, origins so, so, so fruitful. fruitful. Uh, definitely, definitely there, there is, is much, much to it, it. and yeah, certainly, certainly we need a lot more time. More time. Uh, actually, actually, I need time. Michael, Michael you've, you've already, already taken the time. time. You've done a lot of research here, and we want to thank you for that. Wow, well, I think, I think uh, certainly, certainly before, before this, this whole agenda, agenda that's, that's been rolled out with Klaus Schwab and, and yeah, the, the World, World Economic, Economic Forum, Forum and all that, before, before that, that can actually be, uh, I, know I know he's, he's just, just obviously uh, a, a spokesman, spokesman for, for a system, system that, that will probably never succeed, succeed but, but if it, it does, does um, and that's yeah, yeah who knows, who knows? I, I'm, I'm I'm not capable of predicting anything here but uh, other, other than, than to say that uh, yeah, yeah I, think I think they're, they're gonna, gonna have, have to kill, kill a lot of people before they can have a, a, a an effective world system, system because uh, with the world system, system with the, this, this many people, people on the face of the earth is just not gonna work Michael no way it's a sad, sad 
reality. My uh, my initial thoughts were coming from the Agenda 201, 201 Jesuits being hidden by Catherine the Great in Russia. Mm. In Russia. And it happened in Wuhan. It happened in a city of China. So you really connect the dots and then you see that they got both in common are uh, the communist system and um, you, you can start everywhere and you will come across the fact that it has also been originated by the Jesuits in Paraguay. And so then you go further down the rabbit hole and you see that you have been betrayed by your political leaders. And you see, we can use uh, anything as an example, but it was important for me to point out that you really see that when China is, is, is playing on now the, the major role maybe in the next uh, decades, then it is not happening by uh, co coincidences, but it is happening because it had been planned that way for maybe centuries. Yeah, so they could invent and take something and uh, influence the people into one child policy and all that stuff. Yeah, you see that mm -hmm. is going on uh, without uh, anybody here, which is uh, just barely recognizing it because it's just so far away and uh, the, the media is censored and all the stuff. And now, mm. since at least since Macau and Hong Kong has been given back to uh, in the late 90s to China and then coming from this uh, big, big, big uh, ritual in uh, 2019, 2020, uh, you see they are clearly involved in that. You see when the, that uh, Jesuitical uh, motto or the Jesuitical 201 Jesuit, the Agenda 201, who happened to be hidden in the in Russia is taking place uh, originated in Wuhan so, allegedly of course yeah then so, and you have Russia and China in the same boat even with the agenda 201 so it, it has all been carefully planned step by step nobody will will believe you if you enroll the entire agenda because they don't see that, that it has been evolved hundreds of years and years ago. It's rolling and rolling and rolling. Right. And, and right. it's not and it's just and only, only succeeding the, because it is in the, written in the Bible that it will be their yes. one system. Right. Yeah. Well, it's Babylonian in nature, too, yes. because remember, Babylon is confusion. So they're just trying to confuse us all. And by the way, why is it that we see so many opinion pieces these days? Everything is an opinion, opinion this, opinion that, opinion this, opinion that. And it just makes it really hard for you, I'm talking to you as an individual, to make up your mind which way you want to go. And I say it's a good thing to step back from all of it. Take it all in and think about it long and hard before you make up your mind. And make sure you study your Bible really thoroughly first, okay? Because uh, once this, you know, pin drops uh, on that, uh, that whole uh, plan that they have, uh, there's no going back. I mean, look at what's already happened with the past three years. It's changed everything yeah. in and, subtle ways, yes. And how many companies are really being owned by Chinese people or by Chinese companies? Here in Germany or in, in Europe in general, they are buying and buying and buying stuff because we are buying Chinese things and they prosper from it and they are buying companies and companies. Yeah, so in Germany here, we do not, we, we barely do not have any major companies. Yeah, they are yeah, stockholders. The, of the dragon. Yeah. yeah, they are stockholders from everywhere, especially right. from China. Yeah. Yeah, this, it's so China, you have really to see China as a Jesuitical uh, major player. It's not a people's republic. Oh, it just it's an exoteric way of <laughs> dealing with, you know, again, I mean, the esoteric truths are very painful, Michael, very painful. Yeah, it's, it's everywhere, you see. It's everywhere. So they will sell it as a solidarity and all that stuff. But please, uh, I would 
when we close with the Bible, we see that it has all served some purpose. It is just a beast system. It is the kings of the earth, that the kings of the earth are all serving the whore of Babylon. Yeah, it's all the kings of the earth. And all the kings of the earth does include, it's 17 actually, all the kings on the earth includes uh, China. Mm -hmm. Sure does. Yeah. Yeah, Rev Revelation chapter 17 you got here, Michael. That's just In verse 2, it, it states that with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, spiritually speaking here, this is not physical fornication. This is, well, it can be, but actually the, the if you ask me, Michael, the spiritual is in accordance with the physical as a matter of teaching us something. So the spiritual fornication is far more, uh, what can we say, you know, uh, takes the whole thing. Uh, what would you say? It's but anyway. Verse 2 reads, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So, yeah, through the doctrine, we've been made drunk with this fornicating. So that's why the Bible's always tried to tell us, hey, you should watch you, fornication. You know, it's a temptation. And uh, I don't think uh, very many men, including myself, have been able to uh, resist that temptation. We've fallen and we fell short. And that's why we need to take the Bible seriously. Don't take it as a joke. It's no joke. And if you do, I feel sorry for you. Because I've known a lot of people here where I live that do take it as a joke. Sadly, I must say the majority. So thank you, Michael. Thank you for all the research, the time and dedication to going where very few men have tread before. And um, we will continue, God willing, next time. And uh, thanks again for listening and subscribing to the channel. And uh, maybe if Michael and I, you know, at some point uh, change our minds on opening back up the comments, we will. But at this point, we're just going to leave them for a while and uh, hope that uh, everyone appreciates the clear view that we provide on this subject. At least that's God willing what we hope. Right, Michael? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You see that the entire research and entire thoughts would not be possible if we would not have the Bible as our measurement, as our tool and as, as the Holy Word of God. Yeah. That's what also they want to get rid of. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, th That's I, right. think it, they, I think they not it, only want to get rid of the word, but they also want to get rid of our God-given genetics as they well. Want to and get rid, yeah, and they want to get rid of all absolutes. Yeah, so they have to get rid of yeah, God. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. It's just absolutely absurd what's happening today. But anyway, we just hope to provide a little bit of breath of fresh air uh, through the media experience. Um, with uh, Michael's work and the Satanic Media Agenda Exposed and the conspiracy series with uh, Michael's uh, look at uh, the JFK assassination and with uh, Science is the New Religion script that I think is going to continue. And uh, yeah, again, it's been a pleasure to be here with you, Michael. And we hope to see you next time. Maranatha.